What is going on, CyberFam? Welcome back. Uh, this time, we're actually going to go right into it, and uh, I'm going to do like a full technical analysis of the Foundry video. Now, before we get started, who am I? Uh, my name is Shibari. I am a operations DevOps engineer. I very often see an onboard um, software like this. That, uh, that helps with systems such as this. I've worked on multiple projects that do ERP, ETL, and pretty much any of the data platforms and such. So in some ways I have a pretty good, pretty good grasp as to like how these things are supposed to work or how these things do work in the enterprise space. Now we gotta keep in mind Palantir is a completely new company. They have a new way of doing things. So, you know, take it, take that for what you will. Secondly, I don't work at Palantir guys. So, um, these are just my opinions based on somebody that's in the field. I can give you my takes on it, uh, just from my personal experience, but you know, you got to take that for what you will. Okay. And lastly, this is not investment advice, of course. So just use this as research. Okay. If any of these videos are over 10 minutes long, I'll be posting chapters and sections below. So if you want to skip through that, feel free to go ahead and do that. And lastly, I want to give a big thank you to all my subscribers. We reached 500 subscribers, guys. Um, I really appreciate all of you guys staying on and voting with the subscribe button. And I enjoy all the conversations I have with you guys in the comment sections below. If you like the video, feel free to give it a like. Um, if you really like it that much and you have other folks that listen to it, feel free to share the video, man. You know, share the love. And let's get a lot more people into the community here. Awesome. Cool. Let's get right into it, guys. This is the demo day 21 version. I'm excited. Let's do this. Let's do it. Today, we're excited to share some highlights of our product as part of our Foundry 21 launch. We will take you through a modular and interoperable suite of products that enable organizations to transform their business by breaking out of inflexible software and disconnected functions. First, We'll present the Foundry Ontology and Simulation Engine. These technologies enable our customers to build and operate connected companies that can make the best decisions possible based on a deep understanding of their business built on a foundation of data and models. Second, we'll share how our software radically accelerates critical business outcomes for our customers. With software-defined data integration and our use case catalog, you can achieve what used to take months or years now in a matter of hours. Before we go on further, just to mention, he there's a lot of things as a penalty brings up that that call software defined. Okay, now this is a real change in the industry. Um, it's not it's not exactly new, and Palantir is not the first to do it. But what they're what they're talking about is uh, they might do it in a unique way. Okay, but what they're talking about is some sort of software defined thing that does something that wasn't software defined before. Let me give you an example. Okay, so you know like AWS and Google Cloud and Azure for Microsoft, right? If you wanted to go and, for example, set up a network, right, for your virtual machine or some sort of server, you would actually have to move before physically go in and actually press the buttons and do it, okay? As a, as a cloud engineer or whatever, right? Or somebody who's provisioning this. Now, eventually over time, this has been brought down to the software level. This is actually what I do mostly on a day-to-day -day basis where you write like lots of software that then goes and deploys and provisions these things for you. So something that would have taken like a week to like make sure all the things are right or all parameterized. So you just basically plug it into this like function and the function just goes and um, spins up your resources for you. It's like, you know, in some cases within like 30 seconds, right? So this is taking over the industry. There's a lot of different ways that, uh, that this is impacted the industry and it's really just increased efficiency like crazy. Just so you guys know, software defined networking is also something that's like changing, like in terms of like, it's getting a lot better and it's getting a lot smoother. Um, you know, that's only going to be better for these kind of enterprise companies. So that's, that's what software defined is by the way. Let's start with a simple question. What is Foundry? Foundry is a first class data integration and management platform, a comprehensive suite of analytical tools and an operational platform of applications for business users. But at its core, we believe Foundry is the central decision support infrastructure for any organization. We built a software framework that translates data and models into knowledge that human operators can use to make better decisions. The Foundry ontology and simulation engine we are demoing today represent this connective tissue between assets in the digital world and actual decisions in the real world. Let's look at what this means for a large supply chain. As we built Foundry, 
We quickly learned that the amount of data in any organization is constantly increasing, creating a massive amount of entropy. For example, in a single supply chain project like the one you see in front of you, you might need to ingest thousands of tables from a single ERP system alone. And in data from other systems like operations, customer demand, and finance, and you quickly realize that it's extremely difficult to understand or discover anything from the data, even with all of it. Okay, so just to go through the complexity here, the reason why these things are so complex, and, and before we go further, guys, just to keep in mind, okay, Palantir in general is a, is a very highly technical company, but they're trying to value a lot of these things into business terms, okay? A lot of this stuff is actually like very businessy. Um, so again, you got to keep that in mind here. So if you're not understanding all of it, that's not really on you. It's, it's almost by design. And personally, I don't really understand all of it either. We can only infer from what we're given. But you see how there's like this tree structure thing uh this particular thing I, I've, I've shown this in uh, in my other videos uh which i'll link here but this thing is not crucial here it might blow you away right now because you probably have never seen something like this but there are things that are there currently like uh airflow i think from, from apache that does something similar to this um but the fact that they've incorporated this kind of ui combined with just the relative smoothness of how this operates is actually very very cool Mainly because actually all of these are integration points and, and, and data points coming from, like he was saying, different tables. A typical supply chain, you're, you're not just, it's not like one to one to one to one. Do you know what I mean? There's actually multiple things in between and, and what you're actually doing is say, for example, you're going from one supplier and they have one way of listing their product, right? Then you go to like down the chain and they want that same product, but they have their own way of, of listing and indexing the same product in their system. So a lot of these systems, what they really do is actually just um, use the relationships between the two things and where they're stored are called tables, right? So they, they use the relationship between those two and see if there's any similarities and then they put that down to the user. And then the user can then go and say, okay, oh, this is from this, right? Um, main reason for this kind of disparity is mainly because like if if I'm a supplier and you buy stuff from me, I'm not going to cater to you. I'm going to cater to myself. You're just going to buy, right? So I want to be able to store my thing efficiently. That's why there's, there's changes. All of it in one place. This is why companies spend years on data projects without any clear business outcomes. We determined pretty quickly that we needed to take a different approach. Palantir Foundry's ontology and simulation engine technology is our unique solution to this challenge. It preserves granular data governance and security while mapping all data into a shared, easily understood framework specific to the organization. This ontology, the representation or the digital twin of an organization, provides a common interface for all downstream workflows, from search and analysis to operational applications like supply chain optimization. It is also a two-way interface between an organization's digital assets and its real-world operations, allowing teams to feed their unique insights back into a common understanding of the business. Let's take a manufacturing plant as a first example. To create a 360-degree view of the plant, we are joining massive amounts of data, like sensor data from plant operations, or logistics data from distribution centers, or financial data from ERP systems to create the plant object. As we continue to integrate data to support more and more use cases, our ontology continues to grow. We also link the plant to key entities like distribution centers, customers, and raw materials, which are backed by even more data sources. The result of this data integration and mapping work is immediate transparency into the business objects, that plant, for business users across the organization. As a supply chain manager, a logistics officer, or a plant operations manager, I can see all the data that has been integrated to develop that plant object. Hmm. And for any single plant, I can quickly see the most relevant KPIs to understand customers and distribution centers by city, as well as any demand alerts, and the demand in production over time. Importantly, this ontology is dynamic and it changes over time, expanding as digital transformation starts to include more parts of an organization and changing as the organizations themselves evolve. Traditional ERP systems and inflexible data models cannot handle these inevitable changes. Okay, uh, wow, there's a lot there. Let's, let's break that down real quick, okay? I wanna caveat here. That's actually <laughs> extremely cool, right? Extremely cool. It's like the thing that's valuable here, right? It's not, 
it's very very easy to go and skip past palantir and honestly most channels just tell you that oh there's a league of their own they're in the league of their own they don't really understand what they're talking about from a technical perspective right the thing is this stuff the reason why they're in a league of their own is for in my opinion two maybe three main reasons one they can get into your your um you know organization and they can basically sort of do a top-down analysis of all of your data sets and just say okay this is how we're going to like you know um you know pull it in and this is how we're going to map it and there's a certain modeling there there's a certain like you know discovery process that is so so fast that is super valuable for these clients you guys have to understand the discovery phase for a lot of these products and see i've been in positions where i've, I've actually looked at not this exact product obviously but like things in the in this pipeline here like in different parts of for example what foundry addresses and but the, the thing here is the discovery phase is so low and you have to plan for this right when you're in procurement or when you're in like a, a supply chain manager you're planning for the discovery phase to be very long that's why he's saying like it sometimes takes years because the company will come and tell you okay it takes like maybe two months right but then you realistically know right you're like okay it's probably gonna take like two more months than that you add a buffer of two months and then most likely another month for like onboarding right so anywhere between three to five months is really what what the timeline is but Palantir potentially, and we don't know this, right? We have to like, you know, we have to hear from somebody who's done this, but Palantir is coming in and doing it in a week, right? Or like in a matter of a few weeks, even if it's in a matter of three weeks, let's say, right? That is like four or five times faster than your next fastest competitor, right? So the thing is, this is very valuable because the thing is every time you, like any time you wasted is time that you, you know, you have to pay people, right? So if you waste like a month or two, you're paying probably a salary of like, you know, three, four hundred, maybe even five hundred thousand dollars, depending on the size of the company and the size of the team. Um, and a lot of these people are consultants and consultants charge big, big money hourly. Right. So, um, you know, you got to take that into consideration in terms of cost savings as well. Uh, secondly, the the thing that's second thing that's important and um, why I think they're in the league of their own is because they're actually taking what what, what people don't understand here is they're not foundry is not just one thing right it's not it seems and it's shipped to the client as one thing but the thing is it's actually taking massive massive chunks of the industry um of these products right massive chunks of the erp system and uh you know scm systems and whatever and and kind of putting them all together in one piece and then packaging it as one product and the thing is this is not unique it's been done before by some folks right some some companies have tried it but the thing is it's very tough because you're you're dealing with a level of integration that's not exactly normal let me give you guys like a little bit of tidbits here right in the it side of it right everything is actually quite separate how everything talks to each other i'm talking everything from code all the way up to like full out applications is through communication networks and apis and all this other stuff okay things are actually very separate when you go when you break it down okay um so these guys what they've done is they've taken massive systems completely huge sort of like separated products that people would charge for separately from their competitors for example right smash it all into one and it's this fast now there's a problem right there's a big problem here one of the big problems here is that you know how like in that screen where it showed all the um you know, here's this factory, this is the important stuff, this is the KPI for this building and all this stuff, right? That needs to actually be provided, right? Now, in a lot of cases, especially in the ERP, you know, um, data sets and stuff, right? These things are kind of flaky. They're not exactly all there. So you guys got to take that with a little bit of grain of salt. Um, these systems are actually very inefficient by design, like not, not, not boundary i'm talking about the stuff that it's supposedly replacing right they're actually very inefficient and they're mainly just there to like help people understand stuff right instead of putting stuff down on paper um so you don't actually have all that information all the time you have to you have to go and acquire that um and that is also another problem i'm not sure if foundry addresses that but uh, i think it does because you can create accounts and these people can go in and like fill out the information so just keep that in mind it's huge like this thing is like like maybe six 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 seven different massive SaaS products squished into one. This ontology goes beyond integrated 360 degree views. It's the foundation for all decision making through search, analysis, reporting, and applications. This so that search analysis reporting applications, sorry to cut you off, but um, you know, this goes back. This stuff is, is from way, way, way back. I mean, um, there's old systems like 
like Microsoft has this thing called SSIS, SSAS, RS, and, and you know, so like there's basically search analysis reporting. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's an old concept. So just want to caveat that. This approach is transformative for several reasons. Instead of reinventing data foundations for every new project, you now have a compounding framework for new data to automatically flow into business applications. This radically decreases the time to build new workflows and provides a built-in shared language for collaboration across functions. Okay, okay. What's most exciting is that this framework is bi-directional. All user insights and decisions are recorded in the ontology Remember where they become immediately available as data for others to build on. Remember this enables you? unparalleled cross-functional <laughs> collaboration. For example, imagine a supply chain analyst discovers excess inventory of a particular raw material that will expire in a few months. They can flag this as an opportunity, notify a customer account manager, and from there identify potential sales opportunities for those finished goods. That one thing is so, so big, guys. You have no idea. Like, okay, let me run this by you. So when you know, you know how like he said, you can go and flag that and it'll go to the next person. The funny thing is when you go to these third party vendors, right? They come to you and they say, oh, you know, like uh, we'll build it. Like we have a specific, we have a specific product, but if you want some spe like other stuff done to it, we'll build it for you, right? We'll do some extra stuff here and there. And they use that as a selling point. But in reality, it's actually not because what happens is like you're the experts, right? If I'm coming to you as a company, and, and you have a product that's supposed to do everything for me, like you're the experts. Why are you asking me or telling me that I'm gonna have, you know, some things, or you're gonna do some things for me? Like, give me something that works right out of the bat, that's valuable to me. A lot of companies think like that. Some people, like some of the older thinking people, like the fact that it's customizable. Honestly, it's stupid. The reason why is because like, you need to have that linear communication throughout your, your entire chain of like, you know, the whole pipeline, okay? And the thing is, for the fact that they're able to do that and actually is actionable moving forward i've built systems like this and it's quite difficult it's very difficult like it's because for one you need to gather your requirements from teams you need to gather your requirements as to like what this thing is supposed to do and even that is impossible to get just because everyone has different opinions right so the fact that palantir has taken a you know what guys all everything relates to each other in this way and we're gonna sort of like just give that to you and you guys can deal with it accordingly it sets a baseline right if people now have a like if they want something more then it's too bad they have to really just work within the system but the system itself provides very key values already so it's really just plug and play do you know what i mean you guys see what i'm saying it's very plug and play you can just get in get out done anyway it's it's this is very it's a very huge point this part of software cycle is usually around I don't know, like eight months to just develop a simple, simple UI that does some integrations. So like very huge stuff. That's it for this one. I'll catch you guys in the next part.